We're not far from the United Nations Climate Change Summit here in Warsaw, Poland, but there's a very different kind of summit taking place in this building. It's become a hub for activists who are organizing for climate justice. It's on New World Street, and they play around with the name. Uh, my name is Monica, and I work for Global Call for Climate Action. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this building? So um, this building was for many, many years known as a cafe for artists, a uh, very nice place for um, cultural events. Then uh, a couple of years ago um, it, um, it was occupied, uh, it started to be like a, like a place for liberal leftist uh, cafe, publishing house, convergence space, etc. Unfortunately they were kicked out by the city from here. Uh, and uh, then it stayed empty. And right now we are kind of reviving the whole thing. It used to be named uh, Brave New World after Huxley book. And uh, today for the two weeks of COP, we named it uh, New Green World. I'm Graham Thurston Hallett. Uh, I'm with a group called Earth and Brackets, a student organization out of College of the Atlantic in Maine. And I'm also from the US. I'm here tonight because I was debadged on my first day of my first COP in Poland. Um, we were kicked out for an act of solidarity with the Filipino delegation after they, after Yebsano made this heartfelt speech um, right after, coming right after the tragedy, the tragedy of the typhoon. On his invitation, we walked with Yeb and held a banner that read, how many more? Debadge means that Graham was banned from the conference, along together. with Maria Alejandra Escalante so Rubio. She's from Colombia. And how is climate change affecting people in Colombia? Um, I would say that there are two drastic changes in the recent years. One is um, the impacts on the Pacific coast because of El Nino and La Nina phenomenon. So impressive floods, impressive floods to especially towns of, that are really scarce in resources. Um, that, that is becoming a yearly problem and the government is being absolutely unable to, to fix that problem, to adapt to the problem, to send resources in order to, to, for people to survive there, literally. Um, my name is Adrian Fernandez Jauregui. Uh, I came with Earth in Brackets and I am from Bolivia. And what are the key ways that climate change is affecting people in your home country of Bolivia? One of the ways climate change is affecting is um, we are losing our glaciers. So Bolivia gets a lot of its water from tropic, what is called tropical glaciers, or glaciers that have been formed in the last ice age and uh, at the end of the last ice well in that process so it's, it's melting at a very very fast rate and uh, and that is the source of water for like thousands and thousands of people all the people that especially in the highlands depend of this water uh, for for their livelihood my name is Ruth Nyambura. I come from Kenya and I work with the African Biodiversity Network. Already in parts of Kenya, well, we have we really have climate refugees, and especially pastoralist communities are the worst affected by by climate change. Just to give a, just to give an example, in Kenya we have two rainy seasons: the long rains and the short rains, and. This is one, the short rains, which is supposed to be, begin late September, early October, one of the most important planting seasons. And the rain delayed till 1st of November. And at this particular point, it's, it's, it stopped raining. We already have a drought alert for next year. In Turkana, we already have people who are starving. So we're already going into 2014 knowing full well that we're going to have serious problems with regards to food. But at this particular COP, I've seen the youth really taking a lead. To be very honest, if nothing comes out of this COP, what the youth constituency of the UNFCCC has done has really, really changed the game. The working, the working relationship and the ideas and just start saying that enough is enough. We can't take, we can't take um, crumbs from the, from the high table anymore. So this has been a, a beautiful, valuable space for everyone. I, as an Af a young African woman here, uh, for my friends who come from Latin America, for those in, in Asia, and also our comrades and allies in the, in the global north to come together to sort of try and, and I don't know, I don't want to say solve the climate crisis, but actually do something.